welcome back. Four million bags of 50 kilograms nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium fertilizer will be distributed to farmers at an affordable price before the end of the year. The distribution is set to be carried out under the Presidential Fertilize, Fertilizer Initiative. This much was confirmed by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Malam Garbashehu in Kaduna, where he revealed that the number of fertilizer blending plants will be increased from 11 to 18 by the end of the year. Mr. Shehu says the problem of the shortage of fertilizers and its attendant high costs plaguing the nation's agricultural production, seemingly intractable for decades, have been resolved following the successful execution of the mandate of the PFI. The presidential spokesman also noted that the production of locally blended fertilizer had saved the federal government about $150 million this year. The governor of, Abia, of Anambra State has uh, unveiled another welfare package for women in the state. So the stimulus announced at the just concluded Anambra Women's Summit will capture agriculture financing, health care delivery and empowerment for self-reliance. Governor Biano also used the occasion of the women's gathering to ask for their support during the upcoming elections this year. Governor Willie Obiano arriving Professor Dora Kuyele Women Development Center, Oka, to the waiting reception of the chairman of his re election committee, Victor Ume, other government functionaries, women representatives from 179 communities in Anambra State, women groups from the Muslim community, police officers' wife, religious and cultural women's group, among others. The closing ceremony of the 2017 Women's Summit becomes another spectacle. The summit with the theme, Occupation and Motherhood, Getting the Priorities Right for a Peaceful Home and Society, throws up suggestions from various speakers from the traditional, political and government institutions on how mothers can manage their homes as well as cope with motherhood in addition to commendation for the state governor for his support for women empowerment in the state. The House of Assembly order I watch has recognized the importance of mothers and motherhood in general. We have enacted law as well as numerous resolutions aimed at giving voice, hope, protection, and quality of life to mothers in the state. The law we made to abolish all manner of widow practices are still in force. For the governor, the 2018 budget holds a lot for women. But first, a word of advice for mothers concerning their children in the area of behavioral checks. Then he rules out his plan for the state, giving an insight into the books for 2018, which includes increment of salaries of civil servants across board to commence immediately the budget is passed, uh, marking two billion naira for free disbursement for women groups to finance agribusiness. We have recognized so many things we are going to do for the women. Some I have already mentioned to you, some will be a surprise because I like to surprise you. Rounded off the program, Governor Biano, on behalf of his wife, distributed 24 sets of oil, gari, and rice processing machines to women cooperatives across the state to support their participation in social economic development of their families and the state. Don't serve as tools of destruction and instability to politicians. And that's the advice of the governor of Bielsa State, Suryaki Dixon, to Nigerian youth. Mr. Dixon was speaking to executives of the Joy Youth Council Central Zone when they visited his office in Yenagoa, the state capital. He wants the youth to rather see themselves as agents of change and to also sensitize other youth under them to shun violence. 
IYC Central Zone. Executives of the Council of Bielsa State with executives of the Ijo Youth Council Central Zone are seated here. The governor, Siriake Dixon, asked for non-interference of politicians in the Ijo Youth Council in order not to destabilize the polity. So I want to caution you all not to allow politicians, those here and those outside, to interfere with our organs. These are organs of our struggle. They are sacred to the Joe Nation. The governor further charged the Joe Youth Council to see themselves as an organ for creating awareness. I want to call on the IYC to properly organize itself and support what the government's agenda is in the area of security. Security of our communities, security of our clans, security of our wards and local governments, and generally the security of our state. For the Ijo Youth Council, they registered their displeasure on the recent appointment of just two individuals into the board of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, from their zone. Your Excellency, a few days ago, you could recall that NNPC released a new list of big men and women in the oil industry. And if you look at the list, it was only two people that are from the 90s of since its inauguration on the 25th of July 2017, the executives of the Joe Youth Council are visiting the governor of Bielsa State for the first time. It's expected that the visit will help promote stability in the Niger Delta region. Traders at the popular Ariaria markets in Aba, Abia State, are not pleased with the state of infrastructure in the market. Nearly all the link roads to the market are in deplorable condition, causing untold hardship for road users. That's on Community Report tonight. The Ariaria market is notable for the variety of production activities that take place there daily, one of which is shoemaking. The market boasts of a huge repository of artisans who churn out various designs of shoes and slip-ons in their thousands manually, some of which are even exported to neighboring African countries. For those in need of accessories and finished products, it's becoming very difficult to get into the market as the major link roads have remained in very deplorable condition. Some of the most affected are Folks Road, Ukumango, Eimba, and Old Express Road, and the residents express their frustrations. In this road, to our own guests, it has been a long time, it has taken time. We expected this road to run off as early as, I mean, as possible. We expected it for at least since four months ago for it to be rounded off. But nothing has been done about it. Tomorrow, you see people walking today, you see some machines will be walking, and I mean, other roads that link to this place are not even something to talk, take home about. As for the traders, they seek a better working environment as the current situation impacts their work negatively. Could you just believe it? Somebody can open up his shop. He will not sell even one naira till the day ends. Because customers are not coming. You can see it. You can see it. The customers are not seen anywhere to pass. Right around the industry, there is nowhere you can experience electricity power supply here. And that is how our people work, uh, and our people work day and night without light. Meanwhile, reconstruction work is ongoing, and some of the roads with focus on drainage for flood control. While the project engineer was not available to give us updates on the state of work done so far, the state's chief press secretary hints on the state government's commitment to developing the state through infrastructure upgrade. From the very beginning, the governor has promised that he was going to um, develop Abia from Abba. And this is the reason we have um, concentrated, so to say, the infrastructural development of the state in Abba. Um, 
given the weather we are in now, that has actually slowed down the construction going on at various places in Amber. But as soon as we get out of the running with us, um, we will continue. Promises have been made, and the Ariaria traders await its fulfillment, which without doubt will deepen their confidence in the proposition of the government to reposition the state. And now to the arts. Awaken the Dawn is an exhibition by four artists at Terra Culture Gallery in Lagos. There were former students from the Institute of Management and Technology in Ugu and are using this exhibition to prove that those who graduate from the school are still making impact in society. Art Review tonight uh, helps us see the artists use different materials to create the works displayed in this show. In Nigeria, there are many art institutions easily identified by their ideologies, so they tend to be referred to as art schools, which reveal the styles one can expect from those who trained under such academies. The Zaria, Ife, Nsuka, Aoti and Yaba schools are some of the most popular, but have you ever heard of the Enugu Art School? Just in case you haven't, then these four artists will do the honors of introducing the audience to the philosophy of the establishment, which is still making impact in their lives years after they finished their studies. This is the first time in many years that the students have come together to have shows together. And what we are doing is to encourage the um, the upcoming artists, especially the young ones that are that are being trained at the school so that uh, they will be prepared. They will know that uh, you know, they can overcome any challenge that will come on their way. They have grown beyond those school days and carved a niche for themselves. Chinedua for instance, works with earthy tones and rich strokes. What I try to do as an African artist, uh, you know, not minding the Western uh, materials we have, I try to make it uh, look at. I try to use the natural materials around me, like at the back of the tree you can see, is actually a material that is extracted from the, from the tree back. So I decided to put it back into work, into use. We actually have been given that gift to think otherwise, to think out of the box, think unlimited, think of things around you. You can actually use anything, you know, to do art. Ibe Ananaba likens his work to a handwriting, one which gives room for discussion as he doesn't want to impose his idea of what the painting is about on the viewer. Lately I've been interrogating the concept of fashion, you know, with regards to how it is consumed here in our society. When you go to social gatherings or, you know, at a place of work, people are saying something with how they look, you know, making statements, not necessarily verbally. You know, with everybody is talking about one thing or the other with how they look, especially in this environment where we are somehow we are status driven. Our streets actually are becoming like um, your typical runway where you, whereby you see different fashion expressions. Awaken the Dawn is their way of telling people to stop and notice the talent that has come out from their alma mater while asking their other colleagues to come on board in order to encourage the students still passing through the institute that not everyone has slipped into oblivion. Yeah. 